This is Duke University. A lot of times in finance, really what we observe are just prices and markets. We observe whether stocks went up or went down, and we're left to kind of infer um, why those things happened. And this is a first step towards taking people's you know, beliefs and, and personality traits and then seeing the, the, the actions that, that stem from those. So we use for this the Survey of Consumer Finances, which is a very well-known uh, database in economics. And the survey doesn't have a question on optimism, but it does have a question that asks, how long do you expect to live? So once you tell me your age, your gender, your education, whether you smoke, we can predict statistically how long you should live. And so if you think you're going to live longer than the life tables predict that you will, then we, we term you as an optimist, at least about your own lifespan. And then we conduct a large number of tests to see does this optimism sort of reflect in other arenas of your life? So what we did is we broke optimists into moderate optimists and then extreme optimists. Extreme optimists are people who think they're going to outlive the actuarial tables by, you know, 20 years roughly. Those people smoke more, save less, pay off their credit cards less regularly. Clear indications that having extreme optimism is not good. Compare those to moderate optimists. Moderate optimists save more, smoke less, are more likely to pay off their credit cards in full every month, are less likely to be day traders. A little bit of optimism is, is good for you. So it's a little like red wine. You know, having a glass a day is a good thing, but too much can actually not be a good thing. 